Hello, my name is Ryan Minook, and I'm a solutions consultant with FileMaker. Thanks for joining me for today's Idea to iPad webinar, where we'll spend an hour or so turning your submitted ideas into FileMaker solutions for the iOS and demonstrate how easy it is to get started tackling some tasks and creating those custom solutions with FileMaker. But first, I'll spend the first five minutes on some brief housekeeping notes and chat about the idea that we picked. For the best experience, it is strongly recommended that you participate in this webinar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Now, throughout today's presentation, you'll have the opportunity to type in and ask questions. So let's talk briefly about how to do that. Go to the control panel, click on the question section, enter your question and click send. And we'll try to answer as many as time allows at the end of our presentation, but remember, you don't need to wait until then to submit a question. So as usual for this webinar, we had a high participation rate with a wide range of entries. So we created a pool of submissions from the previous sessions combined with the uh, current requests. We grouped them into a high level categories or tasks, and we chose an idea from the most popular one to demo. But keep in mind, FileMaker will continue holding idea to iPad events in the future. So if your idea wasn't selected this time, keep submitting them for use as a potential demo. And while your use case may differ, we'll still be uh, covering some common techniques and features that you can apply to your solution. Now your requests were very similar to the ones that you're seeing on your screen right now, but based on the popularity of your submissions, the winning entry for today's web seminar is a donations tracking solution. Now some common tasks for a donation tracking solution is to track the donation history, manage contacts, maybe manage email blasts. Uh, maybe you wanna analyze data throughout uh, charts. Uh, a lot of different uh, workflows that are unique to each uh, uh, company. But we'll cover some of that today, but before we start building this out, let's go ahead. We'll assume that we're all part of a university's alumni committee where we're currently in the midst of our annual alumni fundraiser. We raise donations by calling and emailing fellow alumni or by accepting payment in person at local events. And the way we currently accept and track information may look familiar to some of you today. So we track our information in spreadsheets. Um, for example, I have a spreadsheet here with a bunch of alumni from different classes and their contact information. I also have spreadsheets of uh, the current uh, uh, alumni 2014 um, uh, fundraiser along with the uh, current uh, donations. And you know we probably have a lot of other uh, spreadsheets as well, tracking uh, previous fundraisers and other classes as well. Really, the main point is that our information is scattered everywhere. Uh, we have it living in, in uh, different applications, in uh, multiple spreadsheets, and we're creating a lot of ad hoc processes that make it really inefficient, uh, our days really inefficient and, and tough for us to really be effective uh, throughout the day. Now, let's assume that our boss is, um, let me go ahead and choose someone here from the attendee list. Okay, we'll say uh, Oscar is our boss today. And Oscar knows that every year we're spending too many wasted cycles on inefficient processes and it's costing our team and the university a lot of time and money. And that's when I get called into his office. Now, Oscar knows there has to be a more effective, more efficient way to facilitate this process. And Oscar wants the following. He wants us to be able to have access to the information wherever we are, whenever we want it especially for uh, the committee members who are out at the local events. They want to be able to access the information on the iPad. We want to take all of our information and put it into a one custom solution, you know, connect all of that related information. We know all the information is there, but it's really buried deep within those spreadsheets. And it's really difficult to maintain and uh, update that information across multiple uh, members. And then we want the ability to create a custom workflow. Oscar wants us to get out of those inefficient processes, cut down on the clicks, and create a solution where we're just, we just have the uh, functionality and features that we need that make our day-to-day -day, um, activities uh, much more effective. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I can get the, this solution over onto the iPad. 
So what I'm going to do is take one of these spreadsheets, drag it into FileMaker, host it with FileMaker Server, and then access it with FileMaker Go. So let's go ahead and talk about how we do that. Now there's a lot of different ways to get started creating a database in FileMaker, but if you're working with a spreadsheet, it's really simple. All you need to do is take your spreadsheet and drag it and drop it right on top of FileMaker Pro, just like that. Now FileMaker recognizes that it's a spreadsheet and it's gonna prompt me to save the uh, first row, typically used for uh, the column names and save them as the field name. So I'll click okay. And I'll go ahead and I'll save this as alumni uh, Manuk, my last name. So I'll save that to my desktop. Okay, and just like that, we get a FileMaker database. Now it looks like we're still in that spreadsheet world, but there's a lot of things we can do here. Um, we have this, what we call table view. We also have another view, which we call form view. And this allows us to uh, look at records one at a time. And maybe we want to start uh, adding on features. Maybe we could start creating a new accounts and privilege sets, you know, letting FileMaker know who can access this file and determine what they can do in this file. But again, I really want to focus on the ability to get this out onto the iPad. Otherwise, Oscar, there's no reason for me to present this to Oscar because he really wants to make sure that we can access our information anywhere. So what I'm going to do is go to this share icon and I'll just click on that, select upload to FileMaker server. Okay. And FileMaker server, that's the hosting application that, that uh, uh, hosts your FileMaker databases. Okay. It's strictly a hosting application. It runs as services in the background of the machine. You can uh, install it on a dedicated machine at your location and, and host your uh, FileMaker databases out there. So I chose uh, my computer. I'm going to enter my FileMaker server credentials. Click next. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and upload that uh, database to FileMaker server. Again, it's running in the background of my uh, computer. So I'll click done. Now it looks like we're still in that database that we were just working in. But notice at the top, we have Ryan Manuk's FileMaker server in parentheses. So it's giving us an indication that, hey, you're now working with a hosted file. But how do we get this over onto the iPad? Well, let me go ahead and just mi uh, minimize this a little bit. And I'm gonna launch Reflector. And Reflector is a third-party app that allows me to airplay the iPad Air I have in my hands over to the screen. So just give me one second to do that. Okay, I'm just finding my computer right now via AirPlay. And there we go. This is the iPad Air that I have in my hands. And at the bottom left, you'll see the icon for FileMaker Go. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. And this is FileMaker Go 13. You'll see we have a few icons in the upper left corner. Right now uh, it's set to recent and that shows all of the recent files and uh, servers that I've accessed. I'm going to tap on the device icon and that gives me all of the databases that are stored locally on this iOS device. And that's a great uh, alternative to working with your data when you're in an area with a bad network connection or no network connection at all. I'm going to tap on the hosts icon and this gives me a list of all of the FileMaker applications that are hosting FileMaker databases on the local area network. But if I want to access an external server, I can just tap on that uh, add host icon and uh, enter the uh, IP address of that external server. But I'm currently on the local area network, so I'm just going to scroll through this list and you'll see towards the top, you'll see Ryan Manuk's FileMaker servers. I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. Okay. Okay. Just scroll through that list really quickly. All right. Ryan Manuk's FileMaker server. And give it a moment to think and find those databases. There we go. Up at the top, you'll see Alumni Manuk, that database we just created. So I'll tap on that and I can even pinch and zoom like you'd expect on the iOS device. And really what have we done? It's just a, a minute without us talking. I've been able to host this solution, access it via iPad and I can access it anywhere in the world. Again, just a minute without, uh, any, without any of that talking. It's not the prettiest solution that we have right now, but I can access its information from wherever I am. Now let's go ahead and, uh, Let's say that we're working with Doris, you know, uh, we gave her a call right now. She may not want to donate, but she wants to update the information, the contact information. And uh, let's say she gives us a new phone number. So I'm going to tap into the phone number field on the iOS device and I'll make that change. Okay. Now, before I commit that record, watch the FileMaker Pro side. Okay. 
So I'm going to commit that record on the um, iOS. And just like that, you get that change reflected on the uh, FileMaker Pro side. Again, it doesn't matter where you are in the world or how you're accessing Mac, Windows, iOS, or web browser. Everybody sees that change. And we're already solving a lot of those limitations with uh, the spreadsheets. Now, let's take that a step further. Let's say that um, we want to uh, edit uh, Doris's uh, number again. We uh, entered it incorrectly, okay? But at the same time, someone in the office is also doing a check of uh, current information and notice that Doris's uh, email needs to be updated, okay? So the committee member in the office is attempting to make a change, but watch what happens when they try to modify the record. Essentially, you get a message saying, hey, you can't modify this record because someone else is already modifying that record. And that's what we call automatic record locking. And what does that mean? That means you could have hundreds of people looking at your records, but only one person can modify at a time. That means when you're working with FileMaker, you're always guaranteed to be working with one version of the truth. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good that I can prove to um, Oscar that we can get our data wherever we are, whenever we want it. And what do we really do? It's just two things. I took a spreadsheet, I dragged it into FileMaker, and hosted it with FileMaker Server. So now I want to make sure that I can take all of our information that's currently in the spreadsheets and put it all into one custom solution, you know, connect all that related information. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fundraiser spreadsheet, import it into FileMaker, create a relationship between the alumni and fundraiser table, create another table called class to uh, group that information, and then use what we call a portal to display related records. So let's go ahead and talk about how we'll do that. Now I'm going to close this reflector app, okay, which shows the FileMaker Go. Because again, anytime you want to make database schema changes or layout and design changes, that's always going to happen in the FileMaker Pro or Pro Advanced desktop application. Now, we started by taking a spreadsheet and dragging it into FileMaker. And I want to bring another spreadsheet into this solution. But what I'm going to do this time is actually I'm going to go to File, Import. Okay. I'm going to browse to that fundraiser spreadsheet. So I'll click Open. Okay. And I'm going to import this into a brand new table and choose not to import the first uh, record, which includes the field names. So I'll click on import, and there we go. We get 160 records. We have a brand new table called fundraisers, and we have a brand new uh, layout uh, called fundraisers as well with that uh, fundraiser information. But again, I wanna connect this information to the alumni. How do we do that? Well, I'm gonna go to file, manage, database, Okay, and this is the manage database window. There's a lot of different ways you can get to this window, but essentially what you do when you're here is you can build out your database schema. So you can add additional tables. You can create new fields and associate them with uh, the tables. And then you have some graphical representation of your tables and you can create relationships between them. And that's what we wanna do here. And when we wanna create a relationship in FileMaker, you just find the fields with the similar information. So for example, I wanna make a relationship and have the contact ID equal the contact ID. And all I did there was just a simple, just click, drag, and drop to the contact ID field in fundraisers. So I'm telling FileMaker, hey, when the contact ID value equals the contact ID value in fundraisers, allow me to share all of that information. So we could show all of the uh, donations uh, submitted by one of the alumni, for example. But let's take that a step further. Let's say I didn't want to just um, group this data by alumni. That's a lot of information to sort through. What if I wanted to group this data by the class or the graduating class? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new table. And we'll just call this uh, classes for now, okay? So I'll click create. And now we'll add some fields. And I'm gonna give a, this classes table a primary key called classes ID. We'll change that to number. And I want to ensure that every record in the classes um, table is unique. And I'm going to do that by making sure that I have an auto enter serial number field. Okay. So every value is going to be unique. Every record will be unique. Okay. 
then we need to we need to capture which uh, graduating class it is okay and we'll also need to capture uh, which fundraiser project uh, the record is uh, uh, tracking and then we can also add an organizer as well okay now let's go back to the relationships tab and I'm gonna go move these around a little bit okay so we have our alumni, our classes, and our fundraisers. Again, it's all about finding those uh, fields with a similar data. And in this scenario, I'm gonna group or create a relationship between the classes table and the alumni table based off of the class, the graduating class. So again, I'm just gonna click and hold and drag over to the class field in the alumni table. Again, we're telling FileMaker when the class uh, in the classes table equals the class value in the alumni table, allow me to share all that information. So let's go ahead and I'll click OK to save these changes and jump over to the classes layout that was created when we created that table. And I'm going to add uh, some information here. Okay. Just add a few records. We'll have uh, the class of 2000. And this is for the uh, alumni fundraiser 2014. Just gonna copy this really quickly. Let's say the organizer is myself, Ryan. Uh, let's just add a few more records. We'll have 2001. Okay, Ryan. 2002. Ryan, and let's add two more. 2003. And finally, uh, 2004. Okay, let's just add one more. So we have those brand new records in the classes table, but how do we share that related information? We created those relationships and we want to share that related information. So how do we do that? Well, let's jump back into layout mode. Okay. In layout mode, again, this is where you make all the design changes um, to the layout. You can add objects, add fields, you know, change the, uh, the color themes and things like that. And if I want to show related information from related tables, we have this tool called a portal. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It's a portal or a view into a related table's information. Okay. So show related records from, I'm going to choose the alumni table. Okay. I'll choose a uh, vertical, uh, vertical scroll bar and click okay. And we probably want to add the first name, the last name. And then from the fundraisers table, I probably want to display the amount. So I'll click okay. All right. And let's go ahead and we'll, uh, format this amount field as a currency and uh, we'll use a thousand separator as well. Okay. So let's save these changes, go back to browse mode where we can make our edits and uh, see uh, how they're reflected onto the layout. All right. And just like that, we have a list of all of the um, alumni in the 2000 class and uh, their donation markings. And it's not just the class of 2000. If I scroll through those records, you see them automatically update and display information from both the alumni and the uh, fundraiser table. Okay, so what did we do? Well, we started off by importing a brand new spreadsheet into our solution. We created a relationship between the alumni and fundraiser table. And then we created another table uh, called classes so that we could group our information further. Then to show that related information, we use what, a tool, what we call portal, which allows you to view related records from related tables. So I'm feeling really great. We're probably going to be um, out of here under an hour, um, but we still have a way to go. We still have to create a, uh, opti a layout optimized for the iOS. Okay. Now Oscar, he really wants us to have a solution that just has the features and functionality that we need, you know, reduce those um, amount of clicks. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a brand new layout uh, in FileMaker. And I'm going to use features like tab controls, charts, and uh, email functionality to optimize our workflow for the iOS. So let's talk about how we'll do that. Okay, so again, this is the layout that we created, but again, it's, it's not really optimized for the iOS. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to layout mode and I'm gonna go to the layouts and select new layout report and it brings up this new layout wizard, okay? 
I'm going to show records from the classes table and I'm going to call this iPad uh, fundraiser details. Okay. Then we can choose what kind of dimensions you want to build this layout for. Well, I want to build this out for an iOS device. I'm going to choose iPad or iPad mini select form. And then finally, do I want to build this out in portrait or landscape mode? So I'm just going to choose landscape mode and click finish. So what happened? Well, we got a brand new layout and FileMaker gave us a layout designed to the dimensions of the iOS device in landscape mode. And it also gave us a touch theme. Now there's 61 themes in FileMaker 13 that you can choose from. And you'll see some of these are marked as touch and you'll see the difference if I choose enlightened to enlightened touch. Uh, luminous to luminous touch, sophisticated to sophisticated touch. The touch themes have larger font and larger objects like you'd expect on an iOS device. So I'm going to stick with this sophisticated touch theme. And now I want to bring some uh, data over to my layout. Well, when we create a new layout uh, and drag those spreadsheets over, FileMaker automatically created those fields for us. We have this brand new tool in FileMaker 13. It's a great tool and makes developing uh, really easy called the field picker. Okay. And if I want to take some fields over to the layout, it's as simple as just clicking a few. Okay. I can click individually or I can use like the shift key to uh, grab a bunch, put these out vertically with the label above and just drag and drop it onto the layout just like that. Okay. I'll delete that. And again, just drag and drop it right onto the layout. That simple. Now, certainly I could have created these fields myself, but again, uh, based off the, the uh, from the spreadsheet, FileMaker automatically created those fields for us. Okay, let's keep building out. Uh, let's personalize this a bit. Um, let's add a text label. We'll call this alumni fundraiser uh, details. Okay, and we'll make this a little bit larger. So let's say uh, 36 font is good. I'll just bring this over here. Now you'll notice these blue lines. So what are these blue lines? These are what we call dynamic guides, and they help you easily align your objects and fields um, for a quicker development. Okay, so we have that. Now what if we wanted to add a uh, university logo? Well, instead of a logo, how about I just take a picture of one of our campus uh, buildings, okay? I'm just going to drag that image directly onto the layout. Now, by dragging this directly onto the layout, I'm ensuring that every record in this layout is going to uh, have this image. I'm just going to use these handles to uh, quickly align that. Okay. And here we go. Let's just resize that a bit. Looks good. Now we have a lot of empty space here on the right hand side, and there's still things that we want to track. I still like a lot of information that when we're out on the road that we that we want. We probably want to know where we are in terms of our fundraiser goal. We probably want a fundraiser totals by the class. And especially we want to know who's donated so far and uh, who's still on our contact list uh, by class. So there's a few approaches we could do. We could have uh, multiple layouts and have some buttons jump to those layouts depending on what you're trying to capture. But I'm going to go ahead and use this tool called a tab control. Okay. And tab control just does exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to put tabs onto your layout. So you can stack objects and fields that you can only view by clicking on the appropriate layout. So I'm going to call the first tab fundraiser goal. Okay. And we'll call the second tab fundraiser totals by class. Then we'll have a donated tab and finally a contact list. Okay. Create that and put this at full justification and click OK. Again, we can put objects and fields on uh, each tab that are only viewable by clicking on the appropriate tab. So we're going to leave the fundraiser goal and fundraiser totals. Uh, we'll set that to the side for now. And we're going to focus on uh, the donated um, uh, tab. And in, in this, uh, on this tab, you want to show everyone who's donated so far. OK. so. What we're going to do is we're going to use a portal just like we already learned about uh, a few minutes ago. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the portal object and I'm just going to draw that right onto the layout. Okay. And I do want to show related records from uh, the alumni table. Okay. So I'll do vertical scroll bar, uh, click OK. And we want the first name, last name, but 
let's go ahead and we'll cancel this. And the reason why is because I want to show you that with the field picker tool, you can also choose fields from other tables. So I'm going to go to that alumni table. I'm going to choose the first and last name. And this is really beneficial when you're, you're uh, developing portals because I can put the fields out horizontally and choose to put labels out on top. That way I don't have to recreate labels. Okay. So first name and last name, I can just quickly put that over here just like that. Okay. And I'll resize these a bit. Okay. And move this down. All right. And what else do we want to capture on the uh, donated tab? Well, we probably want to capture uh, the amount that was donated, okay, and the donation date. So I'm just going to bring these over here as well, okay. And we'll just align these. Probably bring this over a little bit, okay. And for the amount, let's go ahead and format that as a uh, currency as well. Okay. Let's bring this last name field out a bit. Perfect. So let's go ahead and we'll exit this layout and take a look at our changes and how they were affected on the layout. Okay. So to the donated tab, here's all of the... Um, all the alumni in the class, but it's even showing people who haven't donated and I don't want them to appear on this layout. So how do we change that? Let's go back to layout mode. And actually the first thing I wanna do is, I wanna make sure that uh, I don't have these white fills or white lines in the fields. So I'm gonna use FileMaker 13's um, style capabilities, okay? There's some default styles, which is the white fill and white line. We also have the ability to uh, select a minimal edit box and that way, uh, the white fill white lines are gone and it adopts the uh, um, coloring of the background okay and you can see that change uh, there okay it looks a little bit cleaner but again our goal is to get rid of these people here uh, who haven't donated so what we're going to do i'm going to go ahead and double click on my portal and there's an option to filter the portal okay so i'm going to go ahead and uh, check on that and we have to create a calculation and this is FileMaker's calculation window. You're going to see it uh, all throughout the software. Essentially, you have uh, fields in, in uh, their tables, operators, the preset list of calculation functions, which cut down on the amount of querying you have to do. So you combine all of these, you combine them with some literal text to form different expressions to get different results. In this scenario, um, each portal record will be visible when I just want to say um, they'll be visible when the amount does not equal zero. Okay. So I'll click OK. Click OK again. And exit that layout. Let's go to the donated tab. And as we scroll through, you'll see that all of the um, individuals who have not donated have now been filtered out of. Um, our portal. Okay, so let's keep building out. Let's go back to layout mode and go to the contact list tab. And we're pretty much gonna do the same thing here, right? We wanna show everyone uh, who uh, has not donated yet, okay? So we're gonna choose uh, to pull from the alumni um, table again. This time we're going to set a filter. So each portal record will be visible when, let's say from fundraisers, the amount equals zero. Okay. And we'll click okay. All right. And again, we can add the, uh, the fields here. Um, but I want to cancel this because it's quicker to add fields in a portal uh, from the uh, field picker. So I'm going to choose uh, from the alumni the first and last name field, bring that out horizontally, put the label right above. Okay. And move this down a little bit. Okay. And let's resize these. All right. Bring this over here like this. Okay. And then we probably want to add um, the contacts uh, phone.
Okay. Bring that over here. And then we also want to have the ability to email as well. We could send a thank you, or if uh, we call the person and uh, they're not available or uh, they didn't pick up, then we could uh, email them as well. Now, before we get into setting up an email, uh, we could we could just put the email uh, uh, field here as well. But let's go ahead and uh, step out of this solution for a second and uh, jump back to the beginning of the demo when I talked about different ways that you could create a brand new FileMaker solution. Now, we took a spreadsheet and we dragged it into FileMaker to get started. But another way to get started is by creating a brand new database from Starter Solution. Now, Starter Solutions, these are 16 of the most uh, common tasks that businesses use to uh, track to meet their goals, okay? Uh, estimates, project tracking, invoices, event management, contact management. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the invoices starter solution here, okay? And not only are these a great way for you to get started, you know, they're fully customizable, they're ger generic enough to meet any uh, uh, company's uh, needs, but they're also a really great resource. So as you're uh, working through and building up your FileMaker knowledge, if you want more examples of, uh, you know, real world examples of some scripting, you know, you can reverse engineer some of these scripts. Uh, same thing if you want to take a look at uh, some real world examples of some uh, relationships. Okay, reverse engineer that and reverse engineer some of the features that you see in the star solutions that you might want to employ into uh, your own solutions. Uh, there's also uh, uh, pre-built layouts for all the technologies that you can access your FileMaker database with. So these act as good guides in terms of uh, how you may want to approach building your own layouts for these technologies. Um, I also like to use these as uh, resources for my own layouts. I'm going to go to layout mode and I'm going to just copy this image of the email uh, icon and I'll close out this invoices. And then I'll bring that back into my own layout. So I'm just going to paste and there it is. Okay. And I'll just resize this uh, email icon a bit. Okay. Let's make that a little bit larger. There we go. And let's give it a label. Okay. Now I just duplicated that uh, label instead of uh, using the text tool just uh, to make it a little bit more efficient. So we'll call this email. Okay. Now, what are we going to do with that icon? Well, I'm going to go ahead and control click on a Mac or right click on Windows and select button setup. Okay. And here's a list of all of the preset script steps that FileMaker comes with. Again, cutting down on the amount of querying you have to do. And I'm just going to use a uh, the send mail script step. Okay. So I want FileMaker to auto populate the to section with the value from uh, the email field. Okay, and then, you know, we'll leave the CC BCC open, same thing with subject, but I probably don't want to type in my signature every single time um, I send an email. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to automate that by uh, adding a calculation to uh, this message section. Okay, and here's that calculation dialogue window again that we talked about. Again, the fields to the tables, operators, and uh, the preset functions. Now I'm actually going to add some literal text. Okay, so this is going to say thanks with a comma. And I'm going to concatenate that with a, um, a return. And I'm going to concatenate that with a um, some more literal text. Okay, and I'm going to add another return. And then I'm going to add, uh, finally, uh, class of O2. Okay, so essentially how my signature should look is uh, the first line, thanks with a comma. Uh, second line, Ryan Manuk, and the third line of class of O2. So I'll click OK. OK. All right, so we have that email there. Now let's keep building. I, the contact uh, list tab looks pretty good. Um, for the donated uh, tab, let's say that we wanted to add a summary for um, all of the, uh, or for a total of the amount of donations given by each class. Well, Let's go ahead and I'm going to go back to File, Manage, Database, okay? I'm going to go to the uh, Fundraisers table, just double click on that. And I'm going to add a total field and I'm going to change the type from text to summary. And I'm going to click Create. And I can choose total of, well, I want you to capture the total of each amount, okay? So click OK. 
All right. And let's go ahead and use the field picker to bring that over to our layout. Again, it's just a drag and drop, just like that. And let's go ahead and format that total field with a currency. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll exit layout mode, go back to browse mode and take a look at our changes. Okay, you notice as I scroll through, the total automatically populates for each class, dynamically changes, okay? Uh, same thing with uh, the donated uh, filtered uh, portal. And then the contact list, you'll see that the filters as well. And we can uh, click on that email button and have it automatically populate the value into the to section with our signature um, that we specified. And let's go ahead and clean up these uh, fields. I don't want uh, that white background again. So I'm going to use FileMaker's, again, FileMaker's uh, styles feature to remove that. Give them all uh, the same style. There we go. Okay. So now, now that we have the donated and the contact list set, let's focus on uh, the fundraiser goal and fundraiser totals by class tab. And we'll focus first on the fundraiser totals by class. What I'm going to do to give a really good visual representation of my data is use FileMaker's uh, charting feature. So I'm going to click on this charting icon and then just draw that uh, chart icon, um, a chart application right onto uh, my layout or chart feature onto my layout. Okay, so I'm going to give this a title. I'm going to say uh, fundraiser total by class. Okay. And then for the X axis, I'm going to choose the uh, class uh, field. Okay, so there's our values 2000 to 2004. And then for data, I'm going to specify the uh, fundraiser totals. Okay. And there we go. Dynamically appears. So I'm going to show data points onto my chart. I'm going to go back to the Y axis. Okay. And I'm going to set this as a currency. We'll have uh, the thousand separator and we'll add uh, some notation there as well. All right. So let's go ahead and click done. Exit layout. Fundraiser totals by class. Again, that's a really nice visual representation of our data as a selling point when we're out at our local events. It's really great to, uh, you know, get uh, the uh, the classes, you know, uh, raise their spirits and, you know, get them really involved in trying to beat the other classes and helps us out for our fundraiser. Now for the fundraiser goal, we want all of the, um, all of the uh, fundraisers in to uh, fundraiser or donations in total. We want to capture that in total. But the way that we currently have our relationships, they're built by uh, the classes and not by the fundraisers in total. And that's why we have our charts broken down between uh, you know 2000 through 2004. Now there's some different ways to approach uh, grabbing data. Um, you can use uh, you know some calculations, uh, execute SQL calculations to uh, grab specific information and show it in your chart. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do another approach by using relationships to grab the information that I want. So I'm gonna go back to uh, the file, manage uh, database window, okay? And again, based off our relationship, the charting information is gonna be uh, summarizing the classes. But I wanted to summarize the uh, fundraiser, okay? So I can get the totals of the fundraiser and match it towards our goal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna highlight the fundraisers table. Okay, that's where all the donation information is. And I'm going to uh, duplicate that table. So now we have another instance of that table. It's called fundraisers two. Okay, I'm just gonna move it over here. And then again, when it comes to creating relationships, it's all about finding that similar data, right? So I'm just gonna match and create this relationship from fundraiser to fundraiser. So when the fundraiser value equals the fundraiser value, allow me to share that information, okay? So I'm gonna click okay. And let's go back to layout mode, okay? 
and I'm going to create a chart onto my layout. Just like that. All right. And we'll call this um, uh, Alumni Fundraiser Go 2014. And we'll say uh, 20,000 is a good goal. Okay. And now for the data source, I'm going to change this up a little bit. I don't want to chart information in my current found set. My current found set is based off of that classes table. Okay. I actually want to track information from my related table that I just created, that fundraisers to table. Okay. That relationship is based off of, you know, the fundraisers themselves. So I'm going to choose fundraisers too. Okay. I'm going to choose to uh, sort by the fundraiser value. Click OK. And now I'm going to go back to um, my chart section and add some fields. So for the field name, I'm going to have a fundraiser, OK, a field. And then for the Y axis, I'm going to have from fundraisers to the total. OK, and now you can see that we're above that 8,000 mark. It's grabbing all of the donations from our current fundraiser and uh, creating a total or summary of that. So let's show our data points, okay? It's like 8,305 we currently have. I'm gonna go to, uh, to the y-axis, okay? I'm gonna set this to currency, use the thousand separator and add some notation, okay? And we can even set a maximum. Let's say that, uh, you know, 20,000 is still a bit of a reach, but uh, we think it's fairly attainable. Uh, but the max, at least just for now, we'll say uh, would be uh, 30 uh, grand. Okay, so we'll click done. All right, so let's go ahead and exit that layout. And you can see uh, the fundraiser goal. We're currently at 8,305, which is pretty good so far. Okay, the fundraiser totals by class. Again, everyone here just showing... Uh, uh, everyone who just donated and everyone needed contact. Now, let's take a look at it on the iOS. So give me one second again to bring up Reflector and AirPlay my iOS uh, device over to the screen. Let's just minimize FileMaker Pro. And I'm searching for my computer right now so I can AirPlay, here we go. Here's my iPad. Now this is the very first layout that we were working with. You'll notice down at the bottom left corner, uh, there's a layout number one, a uh, text and a little icon, which is allows you to uh, choose different layouts. So I'm gonna tap on that. And at the very bottom, you'll see the iPad fundraiser details layout that we created. So I'm gonna tap on that. And you'll notice right off the bat, it's not just the data. Remember how we made those changes with the data and it was reflected in the FileMaker Pro, um, uh, FileMaker Pro application. It's not just the data, all of your database schema changes, your layout changes, uh, the design changes, those are reflected too. Again, on the Mac, Windows, iOS, or web browser, whoever's accessing it, they're going to see those changes. So now when we're out on the uh, floor, we can get a quick view of uh, the fundraiser goal. Uh, we get some nice representation of our data. We can use this to kind of push uh, uh, you know, further sales and, and donations. Uh, we get a list of who's donated. And then, um, you know, we can mark off who's been contacted already or who we just talked to at that uh, local event. We can send a thank you via the email or we can uh, uh, send a follow up if they request further information. I'll just tap on that uh, email button and you can see just like it did on the uh, FileMaker Pro desktop side, it uh, pulls that, uh, uh, that uh, calculation we created and the value in the email field um, just like we expect. Okay, so what did we do? We created a brand new layout in FileMaker designed to the dimensions of the iOS and iPad in uh, landscape mode. Then we used some features like the uh, tab controls, uh, filtered portals, and charts to really optimize our workflow um, on the iOS. So I'm feeling really great that in just under an hour, we're able to take a solution, present it to Oscar, and let him know that Hey, we can access our information wherever we want it. We've gotten rid of that misfit technology. 
We're able to connect that related information all into one custom solution. So we're no longer working with scattered information and we're, ability, and we're able to create a custom workflow that we meet that meets our needs, reducing the amount of clicking and getting rid of those ad hoc processes that were really inefficient um, in our previous uh, setup. But what does that mean for Oscar? Our day certainly got a lot easier, but that 5%, even just that 5% that we've covered, uh, covered with this task in FileMaker, that can lead to one more alumni call, one more alumni email. And what does that mean across the whole team? Just for a day or across the week, over a month or over a year. Okay, so I'd like to open this up to uh, Q&A. Again, you can go to the control panel, click on the question section, uh, enter your question and click send. Um, if you haven't already, what I like to do is give you some time and talk about some next steps. So FileMaker recently released the FileMaker training series, uh, basics and advanced guides. Uh, these are really great uh, sources of uh, information. If you want to kind of learn, you know, the foundation of the FileMaker software and get an idea of uh, where you can go, just like you learned today. Uh, the basics is free to download on FileMaker's website, and it's also free on iBooks. Advanced, I believe, is a 1990, uh, 1999 uh, cost. If you haven't already, you can download FileMaker Go 13 for free at the App Store, and FileMaker Pro 13 trial is free on uh, FileMaker's website. Again, FileMaker Pro 13 is where you create and design a database like you saw today. There's additional web seminars, a lot of great web seminars, um, on the FileMaker.com forward slash support forward slash webinars page. And another resource I'd like to follow up with that's not here is the free FileMaker forums. Um, it's free to sign up. You can ask as many questions as you want. You'll be working with a, a really active uh, developer community and it's moderated by FileMaker as well. Um, it's also a really great resource after you've gone through like the training series and you know, you've built up your foundational knowledge of FileMaker, but now you want to start asking about specifics. Uh, unique to your custom workflow. Uh, how do I create this specific type of uh, calculation, this specific script? How do I approach uh, this layout or this functionality that you may not be able to find um, online or, or in, uh, in books? Uh, the forums will be a really great resource uh, to discuss with um, other developers and, and you know, bounce some ideas off of them as well. And then if you're ready for uh, to purchase licensing, you can contact your volume licensing sales rep at the URL above or give us a call at 1-800-725-2747. We have a fantastic uh, annual volume license agreement, uh, monthly prices for FileMaker Pro as low as $9 and low as $29 for FileMaker Server. Again, uh, if you're ready to uh, purchase licensing, give us a call at 1-800-725-2747. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll open this up to uh, some Q&A. Hopefully you had enough time to enter your questions. Give me one second here to uh, bring up my uh, panel so I can view them. Okay, so the uh, first question, uh, can you drag and drop a spreadsheet created from numbers and uh, not Excel? Yeah, if you can, you can exp uh, uh, export a uh, spreadsheet uh, to Excel from numbers. It has to be a format that FileMaker can take. So for example, um, like Excel, uh, TXT file, CSV file, um, those type of formats uh, FileMaker can take and uh, you can drag and drop that and FileMaker will build that, uh, you know, just that uh, really basic uh, uh, database for you. Okay, next question. What are the ways I can get my FileMaker solution on my iPad? That's a great question. You. You saw that um, when I was working um, uh, within FileMaker Go, we had those three icons on the left-hand side. And one of the icons was device. And that allowed me to, or that showed the databases that were stored locally on that uh, iOS device. So there's a few ways that you can get to your database um, onto the iOS device uh, locally. You can use iTunes. You can email the database to yourself. You can uh, put it up on a web. Uh, website and download it. And you can even uh, use a third party uh, application like Dropbox, for example. It's a, it's a great way to, uh, again, continue working um, with your data when you're in an area with a bad network connection or no network connection at all. Good question. Okay. Uh, 
Next question. Uh, you demoed uh, on a Mac. Do we have to do anything different for the databases to work on a Windows? This is a really great question as well. You know, FileMaker is cross-platform. Um, it's, it's, as, it's as close to high fidelity as you can get. Um, you know, the features that you create, uh, you know, the schema, uh, that type of stuff uh, won't change. But there's certain uh, things like, um, you know, like one or two f uh, font types that may render a little bit differently between Mac or Windows. So when you're uh, developing for a multi-platform solution, it's always the best practice to make sure that you're constantly, uh, you know, looking at your solution uh, on uh, either Mac or Windows so that, uh, you know, you don't have to go back and do a lot of work. But uh, in terms of, um, you know, the schema um, and, and really, uh, you know, like setting up the portals, uh, the charts, all that kind of stuff, uh, none of that will have to be reworked. Okay, um, final uh, question uh, for the day. What functionality that you showed today is unique to FileMaker Pro uh, 13? Um, today, I didn't show anything that was uh, unique to 13. Uh, filter portals, uh, you've been able to do. Uh, the charts um, are available in previous versions as well. Um, oh, actually the, the, the newest, uh, that we showed in Farmer 13 was the brand new, um, uh, layout wizard. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You know what? Brand new layout wizard, uh, which is redone. Also the field picker. That's a huge feature. Uh, it just, uh, um, <laughs> skip my mind for a second and I use it all the time, but the field picker is uh, brand new. Uh, otherwise you, the way you would do it in previous version is you would constantly go back and forth to that file managed database window. Field Picker allows you to, um, you know, uh, add, remove fields uh, right on the fly from the current table uh, directly in layout mode. That cuts it down. Um, also, uh, the styles that I was using, where I was able to uh, quickly take uh, fields and uh, set them to minimal, so I so that uh, um, it, it it removed the white background on the fields and the white lines. Styles is another huge feature of FileMaker 13. And styles are really just, you know, if you use a word processor, you know what styles are. It's just taking a bunch of uh, uh, objects and giving them a different look. So there's some default uh, styles uh, with uh, certain objects like fields, um, buttons, um, portals, things like that. But uh, uh, you can also customize them as well, but I was just using a default style. Um, I think those are the main things that uh, I showed. Also, uh, um, using the uh, upload feature from FileMaker Pro uh, to the server. That is brand new in uh, 13 as well. Uh, I apologize if there's more off the top of my head. Those are the three I can think of. Fuel Picker and Styles, they're just, uh, they're very huge though. They make your, the amount of time spent uh, designing and developing a database, uh, uh, it's much quicker. Um, okay, next question. Is it preferable to host FileMaker databases on a service like, Bo uh, like Dropbox? Or is FileMaker Server the preferred way to keep the database accessible to different geographical groups? This is an excellent question. So FileMaker Server, it uh, it shares databases in a host client model. Okay, so you're gonna have FileMaker, uh, you're gonna create your database with FileMaker Pro or Pro Advanced, host that with FileMaker Server, and then access that hosted database via the client apps um, FileMaker Pro on the desktop, FileMaker Go on the iOS or a web browser. So you don't want to use um, OS level uh, techniques like shared volumes or third party um, applications like Dropbox where it just uh, stays there and then you access it between FileMaker Go uh, or FileMaker Pro. The main reason it is, uh, you know, it, it the database is not designed to uh, be shared that way and you can lead to, uh, you know, uh, damage or corruption uh, cases which we've seen. Um, if you don't have the ability to get uh, FileMaker Server, Okay, then I would recommend uh, going with a hosting, uh, a FileMaker server hosting provider. And, uh, you know, they'll take the responsibility of maintaining the server uh, out of your hands. All you have to do is provide the uh, client applications and the, uh, um, and the database. Okay, a lot of great questions. Um, again, if you um, want to uh, view the, uh, the webinar, we'll have it posted up to the FileMaker.com forward slash support forward slash uh, webinars page. Uh, it'll also be uh, emailed to you. And uh, yeah, on behalf of FileMaker, it was a, a complete pleasure chatting with you guys today. And uh, I hope to see you in a future webinar.